I just wanted to clarify the lesson for today for law of sines and law of cosines because I felt like I was really, um, I didn't, I don't think I did a very thorough job. Okay, so please watch. And if you don't need it, then you, you just stop watching, okay? All right, guys. So you remember how we discussed the same exact example, but I'm going to do a better job, okay? So the first thing is you're going to have to identify what is given to me. So what's given to me is side, side, side. So what are you going to use? You're going to use law of cosine, okay? So you're going to use law of cosine. Second step, to draw, okay? So let's draw it. So we've already done this in class, but I don't think I did a very thorough job, so watch carefully, okay? So here's A, B, C, and this is 15, this is 11, and this is 10, okay? So you guys, uh, I forgot to give you this hint in class, but when you're given a triangle with three sides, you always want to find, always find the largest angle first, okay? I think it's always safe to find the largest angle first, and you'll see why later, okay? So always find the largest angle first. That's why we're going to find angle C. We're going to try to find that guy first, okay? We're going to use law of cosines. So I'm going to actually write the law of cosines for this particular case, which is C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of angle C, okay? But you guys, we need angle. We need angle, right? So we're going to rewrite this equation so it looks like this. Cos of C is equal to A squared plus B squared minus C squared all over 2AB. And you can see that because I'm just replacing it. I'm solving for this sucker here. Okay? So let's replace our values. Let's replace our values like this. Cos of C is equal to A squared, which is 10 squared, plus B squared, which is 11 squared, minus C squared, which is 15 squared, all over 2 times 10 times 11. But you guys, instead of, uh, so why don't you guys, there's a couple of ways to do this. You can go ahead and count, compute this part first, okay, if you want to, okay, and then store it or scroll back to it. But I'm going to write this as C, which is main goal C, right, is going to equal approximately cosine of inverse of this value. So I'm going to write that again, okay, all over 2 times 10 times 11. Okay, whatever that value was. Actually, I'm going to say this guy is actually equal to. Because later when you do that, main will C, you're going to get is about 91.0 degrees. Okay, that's main will C. All right, so now we have one angle. we got to find the other angle, right? But you guys, make sure you understand we have to store this. This is an approximate value. Store it. If you don't know how to store, ask me, okay? Third step. Well, now we know, we know this angle is about 91.0 degrees, so we know side angle side. So if you know a side angle side, you can use law of cosine, but you can also use, right, you can also use law of sines now, okay? So now we're going to use law of sines, and we could use angle C. So we could do, uh, we could do a sine of angle C over 15 is sine of angle A, we don't know that. And 10. But you guys, watch this. I put C here as quotes because I'm going to say this is an approximate value, so I don't want to input that value. So what you want to do is maybe you could put sine of A is actually equal to 10 sine of C, okay, over 15, right? So now I know that A is approximately, okay, calculator A is actually equal to, right? I like to put it equal to. Uh, sine inverse of this value, sine C, whatever C was approximated, not approximated, okay? So I get that. That's why angle, measure of angle E, A is approximately 41.8 degrees, okay? But these are approximated values. So now what you want to do is angle B, you know that it has to equal 180 minus angle A plus angle C. But you guys, I want you guys to actually do the real values, okay? The actual values. So I actually get angle B is equal to approximately 47.2 degrees. So that's how we solve our triangle. All right? But you guys, now, for this case, we didn't actually find the area earlier. So let's find the area too, all right? So let's go ahead and find the area. So I'm going to actually find the area. So make sure you guys understand that, okay? Please come in if you need help, all right? Let's find the area of this sucker. Okay, let's, let's erase this. So you guys, now, 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 now. So, watch this. 
sorry. Now let's find the area. So you guys, what's given to us? We don't actually know this either, right? So we're given side, side, side. So which formula do you use? You use Heron's formula, right? So find the area. Find the area. Okay. And you remember, you're giving side, side, side. So you use Heron's formula. Okay. So, so Heron's is S is equal to A plus B plus C all over 2. So in our case, it's 10 plus 11 plus 15 all over 2. And I get 18. Okay, and you remember our area is equal to, so A, don't get confused with angle A, okay? Square root of S, 18, which is S minus one of our sides, S minus the other side, and 18 minus our last side, which is 15. And when I do that, I get 18, square root of 18 times 8 times 7 times 3, and I get area is equal to 54.991. Okay, square, square units, okay? All right, that's our area. So you would use Heron's, okay? But I want to do one more with you, okay? So I'm going to show you one more example that I skipped in class, but I think it's worth showing. Be sure you watch the video again if you're confused. So you guys, let's solve this triangle. Let's see what's given, okay? Well, let's see. We're given one angle and two sides, so it must be, ah, side, angle, side. So again, anything that starts with an S, you use law of cosine, all right? So you guys... Let's actually, so we've identified that. So step two is to draw. Draw it, baby. All right? So I'm going to draw this guy. I'm going to draw it, as, you know, approximate it as, you know, good as you can get. That's 110, right? 110. Okay, that's 110 degrees. That means this is angle C. And that means this is C. And this is, uh, let's call this B. Let's call this A. All right? So B is 22. And we're given A is 42. All right? Let's get started. So you guys... Again, well, what do you want to find first? Maybe you want to find, let's find C. Yeah, let's find C. So that's the missing side. So we're going to find C. So let's use law of cosine. Law of cosine to find C. So C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of angle C. All right, I'm going to write that big. So I get little a is 42 squared plus B is 22 squared minus 2. 42 times 22 cosine of 110 degrees. And when I calculate that, I get 2880.666. Again, use approximate value, real values, okay? Real, real, use the real values. And you get C, which is approximately 53.666. But make sure you guys actually use the real values. That's an approximated value, all right? So that's your C. But you guys, I just want to try I want to show you guys that law of sines does not work here. So let's try. Let's say someone was going to be like, oh, let's use law of sines. So we know it, okay? So I'm going to write it out. Sine of A, we don't know A, but we do know that sine A is 42. Let's do sine of B. We don't know the angle sine B, but we do know that it's actually 22, yeah? And we know sine C, yeah, we do 110, right? But we don't know C. So look at this. There's just no way we can cross multiply. We don't have enough information. But... That's when you know, oh, I can. I have to use law of cosine. All right, I'm trying to prove to you that law of sines does not work in this case, given this information. But after you're done with this, now you can actually use law of sines. So I'm actually going to use law of sines now to so, uh, solve for the other. Okay, so I got, I got C now. Okay, that's side C. So I got two sides. So I have this side, and I have all. Oh, so I have all three sides. So I'm going to use sine of C over C. It's the same thing as sine A over A. So now I'm going to find uh, angle A. Okay? You know why? Because angle A is greater than angle B, right? So I'm going to find angle A first. Okay? Always go from largest to smallest, all right? So let's write that. Okay? So I get sine of 110 degrees over my C, which is about 53.666 and equal to sine of A, which is, I don't know what that is, but I do know little a is 42. And you guys, I'm going to just write it like this is equal to sine inverse of 42 sine 110 degrees all over 53.666, all right? Now, when I solve that, I get A is approximately 47.3 degrees, okay? All right, well, now you know one angle, you know two angle, so angle B, obviously, I'm oh, sorry, B is gonna equal 180 minus angle A plus angle C. Okay, so I would get angle B is equal to 180 minus 
110 plus 47.3 degrees. So I get this, you guys, 22.7 degrees. We checked that value, but now let's actually find its area. Let's find its area, okay? So you guys, make sure you guys understand this, okay? So I have three angles and three sides, and now I'm done. But let's find the area, all right? And now to find the area, for this one, we identify this as SA at side, angle, side, right? So if we have side, angle, side, you guys, remember, you have, drawn, you have drawn the picture, yeah? Side, angle, side, all you have to do is use what formula? Yes. You use the old formula from 6.1, which is half. A, B, sine C. And you would use this form because you know sides angle C. So A is 20, uh, 42, right? 42, sorry. 42, it doesn't matter, right? 22, and then sine of 110 degrees. And then you get 434.138 as your area, okay? You guys, hopefully that helped better, but always the first thing to do is identify what is it? S S S S A S A A S is okay. No, S A S. Oh, sorry. You know the song, right? S S S S A S A A S. S A is also okay, but no angle, angle side. Oh, but angle side side. No angle side side. Okay. Bye.